Let's have an honest conversation about invitations to tender. If you've been in the digital industry for any time, you've likely encountered them. They're a staple of the procurement process, especially in larger organizations and government bodies. But here's the thing, they're not working. Not for agencies, not for clients, and certainly not for the projects themselves or their end users. As somebody who's been on both sides of the fence, both writing proposals and evaluating them, I've seen firsthand how this process can fall short. So let's break down why invitations to tender are so problematic and explore some alternatives that could lead to better outcomes for everybody involved. For agencies, responding to an ITT is often a significant investment of time and resources. It's not uncommon for teams to spend weeks crafting the perfect response only to find out that they were just there to make up the numbers. And this isn't just frustrating, it's economically unsustainable. The amount of work involved in pitching is substantial. Agencies often have to dedicate significant resources to preparing detailed proposals, which takes time away from billable work and ongoing projects. This investment is made with no guarantee of success and often with the knowledge that they may have little or no chance of winning the bid. Moreover, limited information provided by most ITTs make actual accurate pricing nearly impossible. Agencies are forced to make educated guesses about the scope and complexity of the work, often leading to either overpriced, in which case they lose the bid, or underpriced, in which case they lose money on the project. This lack of information and the absence of an opportunity to conduct necessary research puts agencies in a precarious position. To mitigate these risks, agencies often have to add to their pricing, which can make them less competitive. Alternatively, they might lowball their estimates to win the bid, potentially setting themselves up for financial strain or compromise project quality further down the line. Clients might think they're getting a good deal through competitive tendering, but the reality is often quite different. The costs associated with preparing unsuccessful bids don't just disappear. They have to be factored into the rate of a successful project. This means clients are indirectly paying for all of those failed proposals, essentially subsidizing the entire tendering process across the industry. Furthermore, the ITT process often rewards the best sales pitch rather than the most suitable agency. Clients end up with a partner who excels in writing proposals, but might not be the right fit for the specific needs of the project. In many cases, agencies tell the client what they want to hear rather than what they need to know, leading to a misaligned expectations and potential project failure further down the line. But perhaps the most significant drawback of the ITT process is its impact on the projects themselves. The rigid specifications laid out in most invitations to tend to leave little room for agencies to bring their expertise to bear on the project's scope and approach. This inflexibility continues throughout the project as the fixed scope makes it challenging to adapt to new insights or changing requirements. It can also lead to tension between the client and the agency over what is considered in scope, potentially damaging the relationship and the project's chance of success. Moreover, the selection process is often weighed too heavily towards the cheapest price, not the best value, and this can result in subpar outcomes. As the focus shifts from delivering quality and innovation to merely meeting the minimum requirements at the lowest cost. The fixed scope also means there is limited opportunity to respond to insights gained during the project, including, crucially, user testing results. In the fast paced world of digital, this inflexibility can lead to outdated solutions or missed opportunities for improvement. And without the ability to pivot based on user feedback, projects risk delivering products that are not actually suitable to users' needs regardless of how well they adhere to the original specification. So what's the solution? I understand the need for accountability and fairness in the procurement process, especially in the public sector or charities. But we do need a middle ground that works better for all parties involved. So here's a few ideas to consider. Focus on track record and capabilities. Instead of detailed project specifications, evaluate agencies based on their past performance, case studies and overall capabilities. This approach allows clients to select partners based on their proven expertise rather than their ability to write compelling proposals. Second, paid discovery phases. Consider paying your preferred supplier to conduct a brief discovery phase. This allows for more accurate project scoping and budgeting, benefiting both the client and the agency. For instance, give the preferred supplier a budget you want them to work within for the overall project and then pay them a tenth of that to run a review and recommendation phase to define the project and work out what can be delivered within that price. 
Also, introduce a phased approach. Break your larger projects down into smaller, more manageable ones. This reduces risk for both parties and allows for more flexibility in the project process. Each sub-project can be individually costed and can inform the next, allowing for adaptability and continual improvement. And finally, think more about value. Shift the focus from the lowest price to the best value. This might involve considering factors like the agency's experience, proposed approaches and potential ROI. By doing so, clients can ensure that they get the best solution for their needs, not just the cheapest option. Look, implementing these changes won't be easy, especially in organizations with entrenched procurement processes. The approach of using ITTs makes sense when you're buying a fixed product or service, but it doesn't work well for digital services, which are inherently more fluid and require ongoing collaboration and adaptation. Ideally, the relationship needs to be more like a contractor based on time and materials. But I accept that this is a big change to ask for, especially in larger organizations or the public sector. The alternative suggested here can act as a middle ground, allowing for more flexibility and better outcomes while still maintaining a structured procurement process. By adopting these approaches, we can create a system that benefits all parties involved. Agencies can invest their resources more efficiently, focusing on projects where they can add true value, Clients can make more informed decisions, getting better value from their investment and forming partnerships with agencies that are truly suited to their needs. And projects can be more flexible and responsive to changing requirements and new insights, leading to better outcomes and more innovative solutions. The potential benefits of more successful projects, better client agency relationships and more effective use of resources make this something worth pursuing. It's time for our industry to move beyond the outdated ITT process and embrace a more collaborative, flexible and value-driven approach to project procurement.